How, how do you extract the most information possible out of massive amounts of data? Apply it to some of the problems today. And I'd like to leave you with one impression, and that is that the, the big data ecosystem is real. It's in the first inning of a nine inning game. And in the next five years, there's virtually no aspect of our lives that isn't gonna be affected. Some examples, which we all are quite familiar with, pre-1993, the way people find jobs today, totally different. Pre-1993 to today, the way we trade our stocks. Pre-1993 to today, the way we find love. We could spend the next 15 minutes and talk about all the things that the internet's affected. Whether it's how you manage your health, how you connect with your friends, how you stay in touch with your friends, how you invest your money, how you find new customers for your business. The list, virtually, our lives every day are untouched by that one technological revolution. Between 1970 and 1993, if you used all the commercial data you could find to solve any problem in your personal or business life, the inventory of data you had to work with was about one billion gigabytes of data. The birth of the internet dramatically accelerated how data is captured, stored, collected, and available for use. Today, 2014, there's about five billion gigabytes a day that's structured and available for use. By the way, that five billion gigabytes a day is constructed from about 25 billion gigabytes of data collected and stored every day, available for use, of which today we only have the technology to structure five billion gigabytes of it. That's the big data ecosystem. We all know that that massive amount of data without the ability to use it isn't worth very much. The other remarkable thing about this ecosystem is that the same moment in time that the data exists, the technologies to process it, structure it, in our trade so-called hygiene it, meaning make it clean for consumption in the decisioning systems, the ability to extract insights from that data through new technologies that allow massive amounts of data to be processed at minimal cost in very short periods of time, and the ability to deliver that data to the point of use. These four elements of decisioning, massive amounts of data, the ability to structure it, the ability to find the insights, and the ability to deliver the insight to the point of use, are all coming together at this same moment in time. The way our lives will change is today, we ask ourselves, what decisions do I have to make? What data is out there that I could use? It won't be long before we say, here's the decision I want to make. I know all data is available. How can I ask the question of that ecosystem and get my answer? I don't need to know exactly what I'm looking for. I'll give you a few living examples. These are th systems that are operational. For example, the two major cancer institutes in the United States have assembled all the electronic data. There's about 15 years of electronic data on cancer treatment of individual patients. It's tens of millions of cases. The best oncologist in these best centers, when presented with a new cancer case, say they can keep track in their minds of six to eight similar cases. The system keeps track of 10,000 similar cases. So today, in this experimental lab, the best oncologists in the world ask the system, what would be the best course of care for this patient? Because for 10,000 similar cases, they know what the course of care was, they know what the outcome was. So where today, in the normal cancer center, an experienced oncologist might think of six similar cases, he would use his system to go in and look at those six cases to refresh his memory about what the course of care was, and based on that and his 
kind of medical judgments would create a new course of care. Today, the system will do that and do it better 85% of the time. By the way, that's in the best cancer center in the world. Think of the power of that system in the worst cancer center in the world, where the oncologist would likely have no similar cases. That system's being deployed. People are using it. One of the interesting things I'm working on is when we have those health records on millions of people kept private in these you know, very professional institutions, we're in the process of marrying all the food choices those people have made for the last 15 years. It's been about 15 years since when all of you go to the grocery and your products are scanned at the point of sale, that data is captured and stored and saved. That's part of this, that's part of this five, billion dollar, 5 billion gigabytes a day of, uh, of content, not yet used, but available. So think of it, hundreds of thousands of people knowing exactly what food they consumed over the last 15 years. The debate about food and health will be over. There's no point to track a panel of 10,000 people when you can look at what everybody ate and what their health state was. By the way, in the initial findings of this, and these, th these are just kind of fun findings before the data really becomes apparent, there is some good news, as we all suspected, fat doesn't seem to have any impact on health. So if you leave with nothing else today, you can take that good news away. Now, and think about the way we're all gonna think about this. I'll give you one last example, and I'm gonna show you a real system. Uh, I was on a plane a couple months ago, I happened to be sitting next to a doctor, can uh, a, a, a cancer doctor, oncologist, and he said to me, that part of his treatment is to prescribe this drug that's not generally prescribed for cancer. And I said, why are you doing that? This is a drug that's actually used for diabetes. And he said, because over the 20 years of his practice, he's seen these patients come in who have the serious cancers that seem to be arrested for no cause. And when he saw that uh, fact, he went back on his own initiative and discovered that many of these patients happened to take this drug for diabetes that seemed to have an effect on cancer. And once he observed that, he um, now prescribes it and has had some remarkable uh, performance. So it's applying a drug created for another problem to a solution for a different disease. And when you start to see what the big data ecosystem can do, the thought it generated, which I'm in the process of working on, is to take all of the prescriptions written, matching it with these food outcomes, and systematically go through every drug for every disease state and identify all the drugs that have a benefit to a disease where that disease is unknown, where that benefit's unknown. So what the doctor did in his own practice over 20 years methodologically we could do today for every drug, every disease state. By the way, you would also find out the negative impact drugs had on diseases that the drug wasn't developed for. So that's the way we're gonna think about data. Whether you're planning a trip, a ski trip to South America, you won't be looking up flight times and hotels. You'll be saying to the system, I wanna to go to South America, I wanna do these things, let me tell you about me and the system will plan the itinerary for you that people like you have used where they've had the best experiences. So this will be everywhere. <laughs>